you know, Pastor said you're blessed, but I come to decree that you guys are more than blessed. Hallelujah. More than conquerors. Hallelujah. You guys, hallelujah, are the apple of God's eye. Hallelujah. He sees you blessed. He sees you prosperous. He sees you, hallelujah, above and not beneath. Hallelujah. He sees you, hallelujah, lacking nothing. No good thing shall you lack when you serve the King of kings and the Lord of glory. Father, tonight, oh God, I surrender this time to you, oh God. I ask you tonight, come, live, dwell, and have your being in this place, oh God. I pray that tonight, Lord God, you would meet with us, Lord God, in a mighty way, oh God. That, Lord God, blessed are the hungry ones, oh God. I pray everyone that's blessed in this house, Lord God, will receive their portion tonight, oh God. I bless the man of God, hallelujah, Pastor Tony Samuels and his, and his lovely wife, hallelujah. I bless, Lord God, all those that you rose up for such a time as this, oh God. I ask you, Lord God, cover them wherever they are, wherever they may, may be, Pastor Allison, Lord God, and Wes. I pray your blessings over their lives, oh God. I pray for all your leadership that you're raising up, Lord God. Cover them tonight, Lord God. Now, Father, I ask you, Lord God, remove me out of this equation, oh God. I pray that, Lord God, I would be a cocoon, oh God, just a sounding symbol, Lord God, a speaker, Lord God, for your voice tonight, oh God. I pray that tonight, Lord God, you would speak in me and through me, Lord God. Let my flesh, Lord God, hide behind the cross tonight, oh God. Come have your way. Minister to someone that came here tonight, Lord God, hungry, Lord God, just wanting more of you tonight, oh God. And I pray this in the precious name of Jesus and the people of God said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. How many people here tonight have been praying for God to meet them in a mighty way? For a breakthrough to come through. Hallelujah. For him to make a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. Me and my wife have been believing for something. Something in a, above and beyond everything we could ever ask or think for. And we're right now in like real testy times because we're really believing for something. Something that's bigger than us. And the other day, I was in my house and somebody, and I, I was getting ready to take, I was getting ready to take a shower and I got in and I turned on the hot water and I just got in the shower and I'm, you know, thanking God for another day that I'm blessed and things. And, you know, as I started to take the shower, I realized I didn't have a bar of soap in the, in the bathroom, in the shower. So I started to... <laughs> bang on the wall to my wife. We got a knock that we do that she knows when I'm calling her and she knocks and I know when she's calling me. So I do the code sign. You know, I go over, you know, I do the O, the O. She already knows. So I'm banging and banging and banging and banging. Now my fingers are hurting already because of the tiles. I'm here banging and banging and she ain't answering. And I, and I start screaming, Evelyn, Evelyn, across the house. And Evelyn didn't answer me. And wow, and, and I kept on, but Evelyn. And, and Evelyn was worshiping God, and I didn't know she was in the back room worshiping God. But, so I just kept on, Evelyn. You know, I didn't want to get out the shower and all of that. Evelyn, and I, I open up, you know, I start getting dry. I open the door from the bathroom. Evelyn, and I'm screaming, and I'm still banging on the door, you know, like, you know, just trying to, hey, honey, you know, what's up? <laughs> so now I'm starting to worry something happened, you know? So I get all dressed up. Now I'm a little, you know, tickled, you know. I was there banging. My hands are hurting, you know, screaming, you know. My throat is hurting already. I get over to the room. And as I start getting closer to the room, all I hear is Evelyn speaking in tongues. 
So, oh, my gosh, she's speaking in tongues there, going off. And, and I turned around and I said, honey, you didn't hear me knocking and screaming? I mean, I've been knocking and I've been screaming. And she says, no, honey, I thought it was the Lord. <laughs> I thought it was the Lord. I said, yes, Lord. <laughs> I'll answer you, Lord. <laughs> so she started to pray, and she started to speak in tongues, and it, she didn't know it was me calling her, you know? <laughs> so I just found that cute. I said, you know, I had to bring it up. Don't mind me, Ev. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to be speaking about God's Positioning sensor, GPS. I believe that when everyone in this room accepted Christ and accepted him as Lord God and Savior, God made you like he built a Bentley. You were built by hand. You were built with the best equipment that he could ever find. You're built of the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. The moment that you gave your life to him, everything that was accessible to the kingdom, and he owns a cattle on a thousand hills, and, and everything that's out there has been designed by him and made by him. But I believe that with every Bentley that he built, he decided it has to have a GPS sensor put inside of it. And the reason why he decided that he had to put a GPS in every car or every person in this world was because he knew one day you would have to turn around. One day you would be walking out there in this world all alone, saying to yourself, where am I, Lord? Where am I? And he knew that if he wouldn't put a GPS inside of you and wouldn't allow you to receive something that would give you the ability to be able to turn it all around, you would be lost. There would be a lot of people in this house that would be lost. I go hunting. Everybody has different things they like to do. My pet peeve is I like to go hunting. And I learned as I go hunting that I'm going into uncharted territories. I go to a place where there's 600,000 acres just set apart to go hunting. Out there, they take all the bears that they catch wherever in Florida, and they release them in the place where we go hunting. So where I go, there's the most dangerous snakes, bears, I mean, there's, there's leopards, there's all kind of animals running around where I go hunting. And the thing is, it's so dark. Have you ever looked out and you have some empty lots around your home and you see all these trees and you just can't see nothing? The closer you get to all those trees is the less you can see inside of the property. I have to go and walk into that property, into the unknown. And what I have to do is as I'm going into these properties and I'm carrying my weapons and I'm looking for the animal that I'm looking for, I keep going deeper and deeper and deeper into the jungle. But I also have to keep in the back of my mind that I need to know how to get back out. Because remember, I can get in but it's not guaranteed I'm going to come back out. It takes a person that gets skilled at whatever they're doing to understand that, you know what, the way in is not always the way out. And as I keep going through those jungles and I, I'm in the pitch, pitch, pitch dark, I mean, it's so dark, you can put your hand in front of you and you can't see yourself, the, 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 the spiders that are out there are this big, and the webs that are out there, I've never seen something webbed so beautiful from a tree right there to a tree here, this high, that low, 
They're standing in the middle of it, and I mean, the web is so beautiful that they sew. It's so meticulously done, Pastor. It's just so awesome. And the thing is, I got to walk through that. There's times I'm going to walk through that and not even know if one falls on me, one jumps on me, whatever. Long story short is that the further I go out, the more I have to worry about coming back in. So the more I've gone hunting, the more familiar that I've gotten with where I'm going. You see, you don't go to places that you're not familiar with. Anything that's familiar is easy for you to go back to over and over. Hey, where does that lady live? Well, I used to live next to her over there on Sheffield Street. You could be anywhere, but you know how to get back to Sheffield Street to get to that lady. I said all of that to say this. A lot of us here tonight have an assignment over our lives. Is there an amen there? Amen. All of us here, not a lot of us, all of us here have an assignment over our lives. God is calling you to do the unfamiliar things. In fact, I spoke to the men and women this week on Sunday, and when I spoke to them, I told them, I believe that every time God had a plan to have something done in this world, he carried out a, he, he, he rose up a person to carry out the call. Every one of you weren't made by circumstance or because it was something that you and your mother just got together and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, here you are. No, I believe that God had a plan for each and every person here tonight. We're all going somewhere. We're going to places that we don't even know that we're going to go. We've got such a diversity here in the sanctuary. We have people, we got more than five, six, seven languages that can be spoken. I bet maybe ten languages in this room right now. And the gifts are just the same way. There's a diversity of gifts in this room that's amazing. And we need to all understand that, you know what, we need to know where we're going with our gifts. God has called us all to a different region of the world, to a different place. I can go to a place to minister and no one receive me, but this man goes to the same place in an army barracks, and he, was an, and he was a soldier, and he starts to speak about what God has done in his life, and everyone there gets saved. So do we agree that all of us have an assignment on our lives then? Every one of you been called for a different purpose with a different plan, and God has got, a, 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 I believe he has something great in the heavens, and he's looking down and he's seeing the people that are making a U-turn, the people that were going the wrong way, but he's called them by name. And he says, Pastor Tony, I'm calling you, turn around. Evelyn, I'm calling you, turn around. Louis, I'm calling you, turn around. I believe that all of us have given, been given an opportunity to go out and do whatever we wanted to do. But I need you to understand we are now in the end times. We're now in a time that there's no more time to play around with what God has given you. No more time for the pity parties and no more time for allowing yourself to go there when you need, don't need to go there. Now's the time when you got to get on bended knee and start asking God to split the sea so that you can cross. Does anyone need the sea to be split in their lives tonight? Does anyone want to get through, go from where they are to where they're going? He didn't come for people that were perfect. I've been so many times I've been ridiculed because of mistakes that I've made 
because people know that I'm a man of God and I can't make mistakes. Could you believe that, Vicky? I have to be perfect. And I tell them, stop judging me because it's not me that you got to look at. You got, you're looking at the old man that sometimes tries to rise up again. You're looking at a man that God has done amazing things in my life. And I believe God is doing even more amazing things in your life. In your life. You think that you come here and sit here week after week after week after week just getting the word poured out on you? You think that you come here, you come here tired and you know what? God starts to speak a word into your heart, and you know what? Before you know it, you took off, and now you're in a whole different place because God has moved in your life. You know who he speaks to? He speaks to that person that sold out, that person that decided, I'm not allowing all the things of this world to keep distracting me from where God is calling me to be. Don't be caught two steps behind from your package because your package is never going to be received from you for you because you're two steps behind from catching it, from getting it. Don't miss the package. What Tony, Pastor Tony always talks about, don't miss your package. There's no one, is there any perfect ones in the house I need to know right now? Is there any perfect ones? Stop beating yourself up for the mistakes you've made. God has forgiven you, and he has taken it, and he has casted it into the seas of forgetfulness, and everything that was in your life is no more. You're a new man, you're a new woman, and I come to tell you, rise up! Rise up. Rise up above your problems. Rise up above your circumstances. Don't allow the enemy to keep you down and out and feeling like you're always sick and you're always going through something. What did Pastor Tony say a couple minutes ago when he was up there taking the offering? It could be my last quarter, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm not broke. You want to call yourself broke because you got a quarter? You go ahead and do it, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Too blessed. Too blessed. Too blessed. Is there any people that are too blessed to be stressed in the house? Amen. Let's turn to Proverbs 3.5. Throw your Bible at me when you get there. Oh, no, excuse me. I made a mistake. <laughs> Watch it. I get black and blue real easy, guys. Don't, 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 don't take me literal now. What's that first word say? Run. What does it say? Run. Run. It says what? Trust. Trust. What does that word mean? Huh? Trust. Okay. All right. What, What else? Trust. Yeah, lean on. Come on, trust. Trust, ha, have confidence in trust? Faith. Faith. So we got confidence. We got faith. We can trust and God is going to do something. That's the first word of this word that we're going to talk about. Trust in who? Trust in who? Oh, let's, let's stop right there. Let's stop and put a little hanger on that, a little nail. Stop trusting on yourself. Stop trusting on yourselves. You have never been the one that supplied all your needs according to your riches and glory, like it says in the word. 
You've never been the one, hallelujah, that made a nail and grew a tree. You're not the one, hallelujah, that in invented the car and the light and the water. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Trust. Trust in the Lord. With what? All your heart. Oh, with all your what? All your heart. Yes, sir. What happens when you trust with all your heart? Now you can drop all your guard. Now you can stop thinking that it's you doing anything, and you can understand that, you know what? I have to trust in God to do everything for me. I have to trust in God that wherever I'm going, hallelujah, if I'm not going in the direction that you are calling me, Lord, I ask you, Lord God, turn on the GPS and let me turn around, oh God. Let me turn around from whatever it is that doesn't give you that, that doesn't give you the pleasure that, that you can't see the anointing and the blessing coming from it. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to be involved in anything that is not blessing the Lord thy God that I serve. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate me. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate me. Nothing can separate me from the love I got for God. And lean not on your own understanding because that's all you do. You have to put that in here because all you do is lean on your own understanding. When you get a nail and you go to hit it and you hit your finger, you know what? You go back and you do it again. You know what? You're a fool. You're a fool if you go back and you do it again and hit your finger again. I would look for knowledge in that area on why, how do I hold that nail and how do I hold that hammer and how they come together. I'm not going to let it happen twice in my life. Ain't no way. So now I'm not leaning on my own understanding no more. Hallelujah. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall what? He shall direct your path. Amen. First of all, how many of you got to watch on tonight? I want y'all, you remember this weekend, the time went forward an hour? Could you do me a favor and take your watch and turn it back an hour? <laughs> no, oh man, yeah, Pastor, look, look, they're laughing at me. You see that? I needed another hour to give you what I got, but I'm going to try to do it in 15 minutes, all right? <laughs> so look at your neighbor and ask them, what's your assignment? <laughs> what's your assignment? What is God calling you to be? What is God calling you to do? Where is God calling you to be the most effective in your life? Where is it? If you don't know that, you need to come to the leadership of this church and have a sit down with them and ask them, how could you help me to be the most effective I could ever be in this church? I did not come to just sit down in a chair and say hallelujah to God and raise my hands and drop my hands and give my offering and go home and be who I was yesterday. I refused to be who I was yesterday. I refused. Anybody here refuses to be who you was yesterday? Anybody here the new man, a new woman today? Oh, Hallelujah. You know what I like about the, the GPS, what I was telling you about, about God's positioning sensor? It knows your latitude. It knows your longitude. It knows exactly where you are. And, you know, it makes me think of this weekend. Yeah, I, I, I got to bring my wife up again. I'm sorry, honey, that I'm using you, all right? Don't, don't mind me. This weekend, I call my wife on Sunday from work, and I tell her, honey, don't cook. She right away, hallelujah, what's going on, you know? <laughs> so I tell her, honey, come meet me at work from here. We're going to leave. We're going to go to Dunedin. I'm going to take you out to eat. Oh, hallelujah, what's the occasion? I said, I don't want to tell you. Come on, honey, what's the occasion? I don't want to tell you. Where are we going? 
I don't want to tell you. So, all right, all right, I'm excited. You know, you know what? She goes, she gets dressed, she takes a bath, she comes to meet me at the job, and we get ready to, I get in her car, and we leave my car in the job, and I jump in the car with her, and she looks at me, and you know what she tells me? Eric, you know what my wife tells me? My wife tells me, hey, I think you still got it. <laughs> oh, oh, isn't that right? I think, I, I think, I think you still got it. Louis, I think you still got it. <laughs> I think you still got it. Oh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's what she told me. I think, I think you still got it. You ain't forgot. <laughs> oh my God. Now you see what I gotta live in this life through, huh? I think you still got it. Oh man. So anyway. I think you guys laugh too much. Come on, let's get back to the word, okay? <laughs> so, we head on the, you know, out to our destination to where we're going. And on the way going there, she says, well, you tell me where to turn. And I looked at her with that eyes like, I don't even know where I'm going, honey. <laughs> so she tells me, honey, well, turn on the GPS. And I said, nah, honey, I know where I'm going. Don't worry about it. Just don't worry. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. Let's just keep going. So we're riding down the street. We're getting a little further and a little further. And then she says, honey, do you know where we're going? I said, honey, don't worry. I know where we're going. We keep riding down the street. Finally, in one, I stop. I'm scratching my head. She's looking at me. Now she says, I know you don't know where you're going. I know you don't know. All right, so I go and I pull out my GPS and I sit there and I finally give in to her and I put her in the restaurant where I'm taking her to. And you know, it gives me the coordinates and it tells me how to get there. Fine, we go there, we eat, we have a good time, we go home, everything's fine. Go to take a shower. <laughs> no, really, honestly, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it made me think of the times when I couldn't admit I didn't know where I was going. It made me really think about the days I didn't know where I was going. When I would notice I passed the exit, I cut across three lanes of traffic, almost hit the world, the, the guardrail, the tree, everything. But I made it out safely, hallelujah, and I got off on the exit. Or if not, if I noticed that I missed the turn, I would eh, and turn on the medium. Any cops around? No, no cops around? All right, and I would cut through. I always look for a shortcut. I always look for a shortcut. Thanks be to God. There was a day when finally God spoke to me and said, no more shortcuts. No more shortcuts. I come to tell you all, this is the day that the Lord has made. And not only will you rejoice, but you got to make a decision to stop taking shortcuts. You got to make the decision to do it the right way. The reward in the end from doing it the right way is going to be so great. It's going to be so good, brothers and sisters, that I cannot tell you with words what God is doing in my life because I decided to listen to him when he spoke to me. And I believe that same blessing, that same everything that's in my life right now is going to be upon everyone here that, said, that decides to say, I'm not broke. I'm not broke. I'm not broke. I'm not broke. 
I'm not broke. Hallelujah. I'm not broken either. Hallelujah. I've been made whole. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been made whole. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been made whole by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. See, some of that stuff was a test. I had to go through a few tests in my life so that I could be able to have a testimony and have something to talk about, something that could encourage me and give me the strength to make it for another day because yesterday's gone and today I'm in need again. It's a new day. It's a new season. But you know what? The assignment is still over your life. The assignment is still on your life. It's not too late, hallelujah, to ask God, hallelujah. What did I say to you ladies? Who do you pray to? I said, you know what? In the morning I get up and I look in the mirror and I say, Rabboni. Rabboni, I need you like never before, Rabboni, hallelujah. Rabboni, hallelujah. I've been taking shortcuts, Rabboni, but I need you, hallelujah, today to come into my life, to give me direction, to give me new purpose, hallelujah. I've tried it all, Lord God, and I made a mess of things, but Rabboni, greater are you, greater are you. There's something that happens when you decide to follow Jesus. There's something that happens when you talk to him and you say, you know what? I hear many voices, Lord, but I want to hear your voice, oh God, in the midst of all the voices, oh God. I want to follow your ways. I want to follow your commands, Lord. Anybody can say amen to that? Yeah. Hmm. Should I stop right there? Do I want a little bit more? Yeah. Little, okay. All right. I'm going to start with two words. Ready for the two words? Don't get offended by the two words. Okay. The two words are stop running. Stop running. Stop running. Some of us are running and 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 we're tired and we're wore out and we continue running and running and running and running and running and you're not winning the race. All you're doing is running. Let's turn to Jonah 1. Let's see what happened to Jonah. I'm going to skip over a lot of this stuff. You know what? Could you put it up on the... Thank you. It's going to be the whole Jonah 1 and Jonah 2. When everybody got it, tear the page out. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. It's going to be one all the way through. Could you put them continuously? Are you okay. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of the Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. For thy wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose and flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. And he said, and he paid the fare and went down to it, into it, to go with them to Tarshish from what? From the presence of the Lord. Stop right there for a moment. See what the man was doing? What was the man doing? He was running from what? He was running from the presence of the Lord. Stop running. Remember my two words? Stop running. All right, let's go on. 
but the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to what? To be broken up. All right? Let's go on to the next one. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God. And through, you hear what they said there? Every man cried out to who? God. To their God. So that don't mean that they all like-minded on that ship, okay? Let's remember that. And they threw the cargo that was on the ship into the sea. Oh, my God, me being the owner of the ship, I would have been crying, man, seeing it all going overboard. Okay, to lighten the load. But then Jonah had gotten up down into the lowest parts of the ship where he had laid down and was fast asleep. Let's keep going. So the, so the captain came to him and said to him, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise. Call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Call upon your God. Okay, let's go on. And they said to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know for the, for the whose cause this trouble and why this trouble came upon us. So that they cast their lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So you see... These people, no matter where, what God they were serving and what they were doing, when they casted that lot, they knew exactly who was bringing the trouble to the ship. They knew exactly who. Let's go on. Then they said to him, please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is the, you know, what is the occupation and where? Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Long story short, because of time, since we went back an hour, I got 15 minutes left. All right. What you need to understand what happened with Jonah was this. Jonah thought he could run from God. And he got a rude awakening when he found out that God says, I'll send hell and high water to turn you around. And what did they do? They decided to pick him up. And what did they do with him? They what? Like they took her, they, I like this man. I just met him and already he's telling me what, what God is doing in somebody's life. I love it. They threw him off the ship. And where did he land, ladies? Where did he land? And where, where did he go into in the water? Oh, okay. So he went into the whale's mouth. Into the belly of the whale. How many days did he stay in the belly of the whale? Oh, we got some Bible scholars here. Three days. And three nights. Let me ask you a question. After one night, smelling what was inside of the belly of the whale, after one night sitting there in the middle of all that mess, I would have been, hey, Lord, come here right now. We, we, we got to talk right now. We, we, we got to have a conversation. Hold on. I don't belong in this place, Lord. Come here. Come here. Let me talk with you for a minute, Lord. But it took three days for Jonah to realize that, you know what? God was doing something for him in his life. And then after the three days, making a long story short, they came, had a meeting of the mind, and then God said, you know what? I forgive you, man. I knew you were going to do this 2,000 years ago. I created that whale just so he would save you. And you know what he did? He told that whale, hey, turn around. Put on your GPS. I want you to take him back to the shore. You know what was the thing that was weird about this whole thing before I passed this part? There was only two ways that that whale could have came out. I mean that whale. That Jonah could have came out that whale. There was only two ways. I ain't going to say nothing. There was only two ways. He could have came out of that well. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Some of us have seen the wrong way sign light up in our lives many a time. And you may have gotten away with doing the things that you have done. 
You may have thought that you were slick enough to get over and that it's all behind you and it's all forgotten. And I come to tell you something, you know what? It truly is forgotten. It truly is forgiven. Because when you decided to release it to God and tell him of the mistakes you've made in your life, he's such a sovereign God. He's such a sovereign God that he says, Tony, Tony, make a U-turn, Tony. When you was in jail sitting in a cell, did you ever think that God was going to have you here as the, as the number one pastor of the Lighthouse Revival Center? It took a day when he spoke to you and he said, Tony, turn it around. Tony, turn it around. Evelyn, turn it around. Lewis, you're heading in the wrong direction. Turn it around. I got a purpose and I got a plan for your life. Skip over. You passed the exit already. But I want you to know that I've already rerouted you. I've already turned the GPS coordinates around because I knew you would make that mistake. Hallelujah. And I knew that you might have wanted to take a shortcut and maybe you wasn't uh, ready to go down the road that I sent you. But I want you to know that I know that you still have greatness in you. And I want you to know tonight that you serve the God of the second chance. The third chance. The fourth chance. That's why I come to tell you tonight, stop beating yourselves up. Start praying like never before. Start asking God, Lord, hallelujah, Rabboni, what is it you want to do in my life? Where is it that you're sending me? Where is it that you're calling me to? There's no more time to play around with what God is doing in your life. See, he can touch you in the depths of the sea. Mm. You know why? Because you have an assignment on your life. And when you have an assignment on your life, all he has to do is touch one button and it'll turn everything around in your life. One button, hallelujah. When you thought that you was getting away, he was just letting you loose, letting you loose, letting you loose, letting you loose for that day when he would hook you and pull you back. He's turning someone around here tonight. I believe someone here came with a mandate. Someone here came hungry. Hallelujah. You got to stop trying to go to new places using old methods. You hear me? Stop trying to go to places where you weren't called to be and then use the old things and think it's going to work with the new things. There's going to be a collision just like vinegar and oil. Let me ask you a question. Were the disciples perfect? You know what's the difference about the disciples? They had destiny in their life. They had destiny in their life. And I come to tell you all, every one of you have destiny in your life. Every one of you have a calling in your life. Every one of you have an assignment on your life. And God is calling you and calling you and calling you and calling you and calling you. Stop running. Stop running, says the Lord. Stop running, says the Lord. Maybe you need to let go of the old so that you can run for the new. 
I come here tonight to tell you you've been called to enter in to a new season. You've been called to enter in to a new season. And I believe that God today has said to his children tonight, I want you to turn it around. I want you to leave the old things behind. I want you to run for the new. Stop trying to take new wine and put it in an old wineskin. Or old wine in a new wineskin, excuse me. Stop trying to do that because your wineskin is going to break. Did this minister to anyone here tonight? Is there anyone here tonight that decided I need to make a U-turn in my life? Someone here that says, you know what, maybe my GPS sensor wasn't totally in the correct place, but tonight I know that there's been a change, there's been a transformation. Come. Come quickly. Come forward right now in the name of Jesus. Come. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your right. Don't worry about anything around you. Just come. This is your moment to turn it around. It's time to turn it around. Maybe you went down the wrong road. Maybe you went down the wrong path. Maybe you were dealt a bad deck of cards or whatever it may be. Turn it around tonight, says the Lord. Turn it around. This is your moment. Don't let the enemy steal it from you. This is your moment. Come. Come quickly. Hallelujah. It's not about me. It's not about pastor. It's not about anyone around you. It's about you and God tonight. It's about you and God tonight making it right. I had enough accidents. I gone down enough roads. I tore up enough cars. I made enough mistakes. Come lay it down at the altar tonight. Come on.